So I got the She-Hulk all cleaned up. We did a deep clean on it. I also oriented some of the fans a little differently to get better cooling. And one of the things I noticed when I got it back together and I installed Windows fresh again is that it does require another BIOS update. So I'm going to show you how to do that if you've never seen it. I do have plenty of other videos showing you how. Mainly I have videos explaining how to use a thumb drive and do it the traditional way, but this time we're gonna do it a little differently. I think I only have one or two videos showing how to do a flashback. So we're gonna do that. I'll also explain exactly step-by-step -step and show you step-by-step -step how to get this done. So stay right there. So in either event, you are gonna require a thumb drive. Now, how it's formatted and the size of it, probably doesn't matter if you're doing it with a modern motherboard and you're doing it the traditional way where you're going in to the BIOS and actually updating it. However, if you're doing it via flashback way, it may not work if you don't have it in FAT32 and also less than 16 gigabytes total size of this. It may may not work. I'm not 100% sure, so I just do it and I format it into FAT32. That way I know it's gonna read it for sure and make sure it's less than 16 gigabytes or 16 gigabytes or smaller if you're doing it this way that I'm gonna show you. If it works for you, great. That's all I'm gonna say about it. So let me start walking you through how to do this. So in case you're wondering what this cable is here during the rest of the video, it is going into the She-Hulk, which is going back into the Dark Dragon here. This is where my capture card is. So that's the only way I'm gonna be able to capture the video for you. Otherwise I gotta zoom into here, which I don't like to do if I can help it. So the way to check what BIOS or current BIOS version you do have is we wanna click down here in the search bar. And then we're just gonna type the letter R. It's gonna bring up usually this run. We can uh, just click on it. And what we wanna do is we wanna run MS3 or MS Info 32, excuse me, MS Info 32, push enter. And then we can see right up here, let's see right here. So it says BIOS version slash date. And we have 4001 of a date. And there's your date. We know that BIOS version, so let's go see if we have a new one. Now, I know we do, but this is the way we do it. And use your search engine. See, I already have it typed in. This is gonna be the ASUS Z690 formula. And it's our first option. And this brings us to the ASUS website. Now, we're gonna click on support for the product, not the support for the page or for the site. We want support for the product. This is gonna open up all kinds of information. You can see, we can see that the motherboard is right there, so we know we have the correct motherboard. And we're gonna click on drivers and tools. We're gonna click on BIOS and firmware, even though, there we go. So the latest we have here, we can see them all, but this is our BIOS right here. So it says 4001. This is the latest. This one just came out actually this month. And you can see the updates that it does provide. And this is a tool that we're gonna have to run in order to do this BIOS flashback. So this is what you have to do. And I will explain and show you exactly how to do that. So we're gonna click on download. And then we can actually exit right out of this page. And now I'm gonna show you how to change that file. We're gonna open up File Explorer there. Then we're gonna click on this PC. Nope, I'm sorry, click on Downloads. And let me get rid of this. Click on downloads again. Okay, so we can see there is a folder here with a zipper on it. That means it's, we have to extract all the files in it. And we can right do right click, click on extract all. We're gonna extract it right back to the same spot. Okay, so this file is the one that we need. Now, if we were doing the traditional way of updating it, we do not have to change the name of this. But however, it because it has to recognize it, um, automatically, it needs a different name associated with it. So what we do is right up here, it says BIOS Renamer 
And what we're gonna do is just double click on it. It's gonna open up a script right here. We can push literally any key on your keyboard. I'll push the letter Q. It doesn't matter what key you push. And look at that, right there, it renamed it to that. Now you can rename this to do it either way, but the flashback requires it to be named this. That's not for every motherboard. Every motherboard's gonna have a different name, but this is what we need to rename, rename this one. I have a BIOS thumb drive right here, and I know it's a little different than the one I was kind of had in front of me before, but this is the one that I use. I thought I might do it the other way, but I decided to kind of on a cuff just to do it this way. So anyway, this one, I'm, we're gonna reformat this so I can show you exactly how, but put this in the PC that you're going to be using. You can use a different PC. It really doesn't matter what one you extract the BIOS from and put it on, but we're gonna put it right in this PC. We're gonna open up another file explorer and we're gonna click on BIOS update because that this is the last one that I actually updated. We are going to delete that. So this folder is now empty and we didn't need to empty it to format it, but you're gonna find your thumb drive right here. You can go to this PC if you can't find it. And here it is. We're gonna do a right click on it and come down here to format. Now we can see it's already selected in the FAT32. You can name the thumb drive if you want. And we're gonna perform a quick format right here and then just click start. And it's warning you that any data that's on there is going to be erased. And format is done. Now we can open up this. We can grab this file right here that we just made. And we're going to grab it, drag it, and drop it. Now we can close these. So I just pulled this thumb drive back out just to have it in my hand. But we're going to put it right back in here. We're going to shut down the system and then I'm going to show you what we're going to do here on the back of the motherboard. At this point, I want to clarify something because I really didn't in the beginning of the video. Now, all motherboards, you cannot do this procedure. A lot of them do not have it being even this one. This is an expensive ITX motherboard and it's it's got a lot of bells and whistles, but what it does not have and support is for BIOS flashback. Normally you'll have a dedicated um, port here that will say BIOS or flashback right on it. And that's where you would stick this thumb drive in that particular slot. You have to have that slot. I will show you here in a minute. Also, in addition, you might have a button on here or on the actual motherboard that you would have to push in order to get this process started. And then it takes care of itself automatically. You don't even need a CPU, RAM, or storage. All you need is the motherboard, power going to the motherboard, and obviously the power supply plugged in so you can have that power, but that's it. Both of these computers and my main PC over there do support it. And I'm gonna show you, actually I do have another motherboard right I'm looking for it right here. It says BIOS flashback and it's kind of got a ring around it or a square that's a different color. That one is where you'd stick that thumb drive. And then right here it says BIOS or flash BIOS. And then you put that in there, hit that button and away it goes. So what I'm gonna do is actually use my phone because otherwise I gotta move this whole entire camera. I only have one camera. I'd have to move it to a position where I can shoot this in. A lot easier with my phone and then I can sync the uh, audio. So let's get over here. All right, so we can see our machine is off. The power is still on, but we come back here and don't mind this that's unplugged. Don't worry about that. It has nothing to do with this video, but what we do have is still the HDMI plugged in. We have our power. Our power is still on. We do have ethernet. We can go ahead and unplug the ethernet. There's no sense in that being installed if you don't want to. We can also unplug the dongle for the mouse that I temporarily had in there. Now on the back of this motherboard, this is kind of going to be hard to see, but we're looking for, can you spot it? We're looking for that BIOS, where we can put that BIOS thumb drive. See this right here? It says BIOS. Nothing else says BIOS except for, what does that say? BIOS. 
That's the flashback mode right there. So what we're gonna do is stick this in here, just like that. So the thing we have to watch for is maybe this will light up this button, indicating that it's in progress, or we might have something else lighting up, but I doubt it. So let's give it a shot and see what happens. Hold it in for a second. Let's see what it does, if anything. Okay, I did not see it do anything. So my thought is, is I have to hold it in longer. So let's hold it in like three seconds. There we go. Okay, it took three, four seconds. Now we have a slow flash. Right now, I'm suspecting, now I did not look it up on the manual, otherwise I would have done it right the first time. But I'll guarantee you that's reading it right now. And then when it starts to flash fast like that, now it's starting to write it. All right, so you know how this is flashing? Well, I just noticed something that's pretty cool. Look at that. I did not know that this did this. That's pretty cool. I like that. It says we are on stage three. Update successful. Or updated successfully, I should say. And we have no more flashing back here. So that would indicate that we are complete. So at this point, what I would do is actually, um, yeah, let's just shut the power off completely. Let's pull our BIOS and everything went dead. And now we're gonna see if we can get back into it. All right, let's turn this thing back on. We shouldn't have a problem. A lot of times with ASUS, after updating the BIOS, what it'll have you do is push F1 to get back in the BIOS, load optimized defaults or make any changes you want and then get out of it. But I do recommend after a BIOS update, leave it stock. Don't overclock or do anything like that or XMP or DOCP, whatever it is, don't overclock it until you are sure that you're stable for whatever amount of time and then, you know, etc. So this is uh, BIOS updating LED firmware. Do not shut down or reset the system. I don't know why it does that afterwards, but clearly it's updating it. We don't even have the BIOS stick in there anymore. Let it do its thing. That's all I can say. I've never done a BIOS flashback on this one. So every motherboard is and could be slightly different. All right, well, we got the splash screen here and it's saying delete or F2 to enter the BIOS settings. So right here is where it is. So we do have to push F1 to get into the BIOS and then we'll load optimized defaults and then we'll get into Windows. All right, so in here to load optimized defaults, we go to the tool, I'm sorry, exit, load optimized defaults. And then we go to exit again and save changes and reset. Ah, uh, so this is, again, we have to push one to go back into the BIOS because I have an AIO pump and there is no fan header connected. So the fan header is actually connected for the IO pump. So we have to go in the BIOS and actually turn that, turn that off. So we're gonna go back into the BIOS. We're gonna hit F1. And then we're gonna come up to the, there should be like a search right here. There should be a search in here and we're gonna click on search and we're just gonna type in fan or actually, you know what, better yet, let's type in CPU, oops, CPU fan and <clears throat> we're gonna hit that. So CPU fan. So this is under monitor. We need to turn this to ignore. And then we're going to hit F10. <clears throat> oh wait, it won't go to F10 when we're in there. So we have to exit this. Now we can go F10 or exit. And we're gonna see it's gonna save the changes to fan is going to go from monitor to ignore. We're gonna click on OK. And now we should be booting into Windows, thankfully. And you might be wondering, 
a couple of things. Why do it the way I just did it? Well, one of the reasons is if you have an older motherboard, like for instance, this is a 60 or a Z690 chipset. And if you bought a 13th or 14th gen CPU, this might not recognize it. So you might have to do a BIOS flashback this way. So there are some other reasons. Sometimes you can't get into the BIOS. You might want to try a BIOS flashback because there's something wrong with the BIOS, but this might allow you to actually flash it. That's just another reason. So just keep those in mind. And we're gonna kind of wrap this video up. So don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon to get notified for any future videos that I do post. Give this thing a thumbs up, please, to show support and love for the channel. And just to be a kind person. Also, don't forget to comment down below with any questions you might have or just say hi. So until next time, guys, take care.